I've been using this for about seven years. I can do it with my eyes closed. But um bum. What's up everyone, it's a favorite blind chick back on your screen with another one. I'm sitting in front of my screen because today I'm going to show you how I edit videos while being legally blind. As you can see, I use Final Cut Pro. A lot of content creators use this or Adobe Premiere. I tried using Adobe. That is just complicated. I've been using this for about seven years. I can do it with my eyes closed, but um bum which is why this software is so much easier for me to use than trying something new. This hasn't changed much over the years, which is really good because I depend on my memory in order to get this done quickly, efficiently, but with good quality content. So I'm going to show you all the ropes. We're going to go through this real quick because there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot to edit. The first thing I'm going to do is open up a new project in the event. That is the Alt N key. Oh, I should probably let you know that 90% of what I do when I'm on here are keyboard shortcuts. It's way too much for me to zoom in file, find, import, and do the same thing. Look how long that would have taken. So instead, I use keyboard shortcuts to help me cut corners because my vision is going to lengthen the process. We're going to call this clean with me since that's what we're going to do. And we're going to go over here and title it the same thing too. Otherwise, when you upload to YouTube, it's going to be called untitled project. And we're not trying to do that. Once we've titled both, we're gonna click the command I key, which opens up this screen to import media. Then you can select from your options here. I've put a few frame, can I speak? <laughs> then you can choose from your options here. It's already open to pictures because this is the tab I use the most. I've organized everything in the chronological order so that I know that the most recent one is the one I'm gonna edit today, which is for tomorrow, the 12th. By the time you guys are seeing this, it's probably gonna be the 17th of April, but that's okay. So we're gonna click that. It's just letting me know that not all the media has transported because currently I am downloading all the stuff still from the Photos app. So I'm just gonna click here because I don't care. <laughs> I can always go back and re-download things and it's not gonna put duplicates here. So then I'm gonna drag and pull and drag and pull again. By the way, I use a trackpad instead of a mouse because this helps me zoom in. You can literally pinch and zoom or double tap in order to quickly zoom in. So we go here. I'm just looking to see how much footage actually transferred so far. So this is about half of the content, which is okay because since I'm editing with you guys today, I'll do the rest for real, for real later tonight because it's going to take me about four or five hours. We're going to work on this. So th this is our initial content. Sometimes it doesn't transport everything. So I like to run through to make sure that everything transferred. And for some reason, I didn't pull these top three. So I'm going to go over and do the same thing with this and drag it. What I like to do before I even start cutting anything is go to the end of the clips and check here to see how much time I'm starting with. This gives me an idea of how much time it's going to take me to edit. On average, my vlogs take about six or seven hours to edit, which sounds insane because it is insane. But usually when I have about 37 to an hour, and this will end up being an hour once all the media imports, that can probably take me between two to three hours to edit, which is not too bad. So now that I know we're dealing with 37 minutes of content, I'm gonna go over to here, zoom in again, Alicia Inc. This is where I keep everything that pops up at the beginning and end of my videos. I'm telling you, this is my easiest and most important hack to cutting time because imagine having to put each of these elements in each time. So I've copied and pasted my intro, my subscribe, and I'm going to do the command V to paste it. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. And looky, looky, all of these files with control or command are going to get moved over so that I can delete this gray bar because there's nothing on here. And I'm going to download some audio. So I'm going to actually go to doo -doo 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 -doo, copies for Patreon, clearly. Or if I'm doing a pod for Patreon or my regular pod, then if you go into YouTube audio, this is where all my audio is that matches my video footage. So I will click. We're not doing paint nails today. We already did our curly video, so I should probably delete that. This is the clean with me, clean with me, clean with me. So you click those, bring them over. 
we know that it's in order. So this is clean with me one, this is clean with me two. Then just drag. Hello, are you acting a fool because people are watching? Yes, computer. And yeah, because it is that good. The static is so bad in cool. this. <gasps> All right. Oh, she's not that bad. Yes, everyone, it's very so then we know Command B, that's the blade option to cut. Let me just, now that I know that this is where we start, this stuff might get deleted. Sometimes I keep the intro where I'm talking about what I'm drinking or I'm laughing at myself because my hair is a mess or whatever it is. So we're not gonna pay attention to that right now. We're just gonna click and drag everything back. Part of my end footage, so I'm gonna put this all the way at the end. Even if this doesn't end up being the last shot, I just want it closer to the end. This is letting me know that all my footage has officially imported. So if we go to I again, and we click the same thing. You see I'm doing everything from memory. We can go here and no, still more footages haven't transferred. This thing called Pixel Film Studios, if you ever wanted to know how I get different transitions or even text, you can buy them on sale every single holiday. They do 20 to 25% off. So, can you hear my computer rumbling? It's doing the most right now. Now, if you want your transition to be bigger or smaller, all you gotta do is pull, and then it'll be faster. That's pretty much the basics of editing. Honestly, it's a lot of repeat. If I want to overlay something, just say, for example, this has nothing to do because this is an accidental clip from a vlog, but say I wanted this to come, I just drag and drop. I do the cut, the same thing. I can even put another transition over it and then it'll go back to playing whatever it was. This is my intro title. And imagine if I had to make this over every single time we ain't got time for that. I can choose different titles as well, depending on what I'm looking for. If it's a lot of text, I go with something like this. If it's a little bit of text, then I go with something like this use here. I feel like they just look more aesthetically pleasing and they're just easier without taking up too much. I always shrink them though and put them in a corner, usually this corner. I'm gonna switch this to screen recording view for the second half of this. So you can see in time lapse how I do to do. Now we're talking, the screen view is so much easier to explain to you. So the first edit, my first draft is always a run through where I cut, I gotta cut it. It's all about getting things down to make it as seamless as possible so that I have less to work with the second, third, and fourth run through. Yeah, you heard that right. I usually go through my footage about four times and then I post it. So this first run through, what I'm doing is just cutting the ends of every single clip because that's usually when I'm walking in or out of the scene to turn on or off the camera. So once I've done that, then I can go into the scene itself and start to cut the parts where maybe I'm talking too much or I'm not talking enough, whatever it may be especially if it's B-roll, then I'm gonna cut a lot of it out just to include the clip that you wanna see. So after I've done that, what I'm gonna to start to do now is play a little bit with the pace of things. So here I'm gonna cut some things and keep in mind, okay, maybe I'm gonna keep the scene long, but what I'm gonna do is click this tool right here. And what that does is it changes the speed. I usually don't slow things down because the slow-mo is a little bit too dramatic for my channel, but most times I do the time-lapse situation because it gives you an idea of what's going on without wasting your time. So once I've done that, we're also gonna readjust some of the frames. Sometimes things look better zoomed in, especially when they're out of frame like this. So I'll also realign it so that it's not looking lopsided. And then once I've done that, I play it through just to make sure it looks good. It looks good, it looks good. this run through I'm also going to play with the volume too just because it was a little bit low because the camera is further away you can turn the dial up over here as well but usually I use this area more for making the things larger or making sure if something needs to be flipped I can do it over there we're gonna add some basic text yeah that's right basic let's see if she can do without a typo nope Nope. <laughs> and then I'm gonna choose my font. 
I love the font.com. They are the plug if you want your fonts to really stand out, pop out. They got everything your heart desires. So I'm just gonna throw one of those on top. Once I've sized it, we're gonna do a little bit of music. So we're on the third run through. Because first is cut, second is adding text and pop-ups, and then third is music. Now that things are cut more, it's so much easier to line things up and know how much time I have left before the song is done or the video is done. So I'm gonna line the music up and I'm gonna show you more about the music later. But once we've done that, we're gonna turn it down a little bit just so it's not too loud when I'm talking. We're gonna also remove, I don't know if it was Control Shift S to remove the sound, but it is a shortcut that I used so that you don't hear the background sound. Maybe it's my fridge or something. Once that's done, we're gonna change a little bit of the text because I don't want it doing the most. I just want it to pop a little bit, not too much. Then we're gonna click edit. I wanna change the font as per usual. I think I'm choosing Hello Venetian or something. I don't know, I'm really feeling this font lately. Then I'm gonna angle it, put it in the corner, see if I like it in that corner. Nah, let's move it to another corner. I get so particular about the weirdest things. I don't know if you guys have noticed that yet. Then we're gonna lengthen this song, drag it to the end so that once that song finishes, another begins, but we're also gonna fade it so that it's not so abrupt. We're gonna throw in some more text because I just wanted to add a little finesse to this video, talk about video editing inception. And I'm gonna change the color, type cut, 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 because that's what we're on. You've seen this frame. And we're gonna be editing another video to wrap up, just showing you how I edit color. So I'll always try by doing the automated version. It usually doesn't work. And then I'll tweak it with the color mode or I'll just balance it out with another clip that I've already colorized. And see, I like to do this on night shots because sometimes it looks way too yellow. And that's it. Those are the basics of how I edit. I do a lot more than this, but of course, for sake of time, I can't show you everything. So I hope that you enjoyed this one and the last couple of videos that I've done. As you can see, I'm just showing you what the finished edits look like. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later. That's a lot of footage. <laughs>